I've been fascinated. I've been fascinated. I've been fascinated, fascinated with the disappearance of Jay Slater. I was listening a bit to Tim Dillon as well, and I was like, Tim Dillon was mentioning some other kid in America who also disappeared that everybody's kind of looking for, but this kid is a bit more good looking. It's a bit more of a, you know, salacious story, but it's maybe tied to the whole true crime thing. And he was making a good point of saying that when your lives are boring, when there's nothing really going on in the real world, when people go missing, it is quite an entertaining thing to kind of get into and to try to kind of find out what's actually going on and trying to uncover, especially when there's loads of conspiracy theories around it. And in this particular Jay Slater case, it's really nuanced because by all intents and purposes, this Jay Slater kid, according to the articles I read online anyway, he wasn't the bestest of guys, right? He's not like an angel, right? He was involved in some crazy attack on some kid where they attacked him with a machete, split his head open, his whole brain was exposed and shit, and him and his friends all got off, right? They didn't spend a day in flipping jail. Now, that, that could be because they're all underage. It could be because they're all Caucasian. Who bloody knows? Either way, this kid is a bit of a wrong one, allegedly, right? Right? So there wasn't a lot of sympathy for him out there on the internet just on what he had done previously. Now he goes missing and there's stories around his missing, why he's missing. And this allegedly people are saying it's tied to some drug thing. Allegedly he was selling drugs out there. Um, maybe he had run off on a plug. Maybe he didn't give back the money. Maybe in, in true British English fashion, he got a advance on some of the gear and just sniffed it all up his nose. Because if you know anything about British people, if you know anything about English folk, especially white people, when they start dealing drugs, there's a real high tendency for most of them to turn into users. I've seen, especially in my days of going out and scoring some of these class a drugs myself it's usually only foreigners albanians black people asians sometimes who can sell drugs and not do them whenever i've seen an english dealer they always look like a nitty they always look like a bit of a crackhead they always look like they do a bit too much of their gear and they're not just purely in it for the business thing right they're in it to maybe you know shag some birds who want some fucking free gear just live the life of a dealer you know whatever it may be but they do probably indulge a little bit too much like i'm not i don't think i've met a single lad who sells drugs who was he who isn't also a bit of a party boy I don't think I've met a single one, whereas I've met like legit, I've met dealers, especially Asian guys who just do the gear and they program as a day job, doesn't even touch it, completely stone cold sober, all he does is drink fucking Red Bull, but he's selling you fucking, you know, shards of fucking MDMA, do you know what I mean, so those guys definitely exist, but for some reason, my lads out there, I don't know, man, my lads indulge too much, so people are assuming or, you know, speculating, as we say, that he might have done that. Now, it could also be a very tragic situation where this guy gets abducted by people and something really bad happened to him, right? Who knows? I'm going to say something very controversial here. I personally think most likely this is another evidence to me of people, especially us British folk. So this is another evidence of, to me anyway, especially us British folk and our inability to handle our drugs and our drinks. And I'm speaking for myself, to myself and for everybody else. We are so crap at partying. We are so crap at raging. We are so crap at getting on it. We are so crap at do, having fun. That's why we have so many rules in this country. That's why so many things are banned. That's why we we are terrible tourists. That's why we're banned from parts of Amsterdam. That's why people in Spain don't like us. That's why when we go to Berlin, they turn us away at flipping clubs and shit. We are horrible. Whenever we go to countries that have more looser, relaxed regulations around drinking and doing drugs, we go nuts. We cannot handle ourselves. And I think in this particular situation, if the drug store, drug dealing stories are not true, if the whole machete attack on that boy was a one-off incident and this kid's an angel, most likely this is an instance of this guy doing too much, going loopy, going on a wonder, getting lost and ending up in trouble. But the fundamental point is that not being able to handle your drugs. And I think this is a conversation that needs to be had aloud. Like, what is it about us English people? We can't handle our booze and we can't handle our drugs. We're just incapable of doing so. You go to a Weatherspoons in a very popular part of London and you go there sometimes at 11 p.m., especially in a dodgy part of London, uh, outside of Weatherspoons, not even a proper nightclub, a Weatherspoons, a chain fucking pub, and you will see scores of people outside just absolutely looking like demons unable to stand up unable to talk being just rowdy antisocial behavior p 
pissing up against walls, shoving their fingers down some girl's throat, like just trying to steal glasses on their jackets, trying to steal plates of chips, like just a mess. We are a mess. Doesn't matter what race it is. As long as we've got that burgundy fucking British passport, anybody here in London, you know it. Whether it's not in your carnival, whether it's watching England, we are diabolical when it comes to enjoying ourselves. We just can't handle it. Now put us in a hot, sunny climate. Take us to fucking Tenerife, surrounded by our friends. Take us to Magaluf. Take us to Ibiza, right? Take us to Madrid, Barcelona, with some friends, with some cervezas, huh? With some pinchos. Imagine how crazy we're gonna get, especially in a place where maybe the quality of gear that's coming through is a bit more pure than what we get in England, right? There's, these are all coastal countries. Some of the stuff is coming there directly from Colombia, right? Some of the stuff is coming directly from Morocco and shit. Cool. It's a bit strong. Maybe it's coming inland from Amsterdam and shit. But we can't handle ourselves. And this is why we end up in so much trouble. And this is why there's so many rules around what we do. So many rules around what we should do and shouldn't do. It's really tragic. And I wish there was a better way to handle it. I really do wish. Because I think if us British folk could handle our gear and our drugs properly or our drugs and our drink or our gear and our drink whatever way you want to say it our D&D maybe the government will be a little bit more lax and a little bit more relaxed in terms of the regulations about what you can and cannot do but I think the government knows they know if they really were to let the you know let the restrictions go down like imagine if they made spare me for one spare me for a second here entertain this thought imagine if the British government imagine if the British government legalize cannabis just cannabis nothing crazy just cannabis imagine if the british government if the british government decided to legalize cannabis we would be one of the only countries in the world where we'd have people od on cannabis we might be one of the only countries in the world where we have actual accounts of people ODing and dying because of doing too much cannabis we have no ability we have no ability to do anything in moderation zero ability to do anything in moderation we are a mess we are a mess anyway talking about this story here is a story courtesy of sky news is update on jay slater it says a british tiktok user dismisses the final police search for a missing teenager as a massive pr thing so some do-gooder right some fucking teacher's pet some dork some guy that's not even related to this guy's disappearance or family decided to go out to Tenerife himself and go and try and find this kid, right? Obviously, it's a bit self-serving. He's not doing it from the kind of his heart. He knows that if he does it and he does find this guy, he's going to be getting interviewed, you know, from flipping BBC, CTTV, whatever, all day fucking long. So it's obviously a way for him to kind of boost his profile. But it is a bit dorky to kind of leave your humble abode to go look for a teenager that clearly just did too much care and got lost in a mountain. You know, shit happens. But anyway, let's read the story. A volunteer who flew out to Tenerife to help try to find missing Jay Slater has dismissed the final police search that the British teenager as a massive PR thing. Paul Arnott, who's been sharing clips of his search on TikTok, told Sky News last week that he flew out to Tenerife when he heard the 19 year old's family needed help. What a dork. What an absolute dork, bro. Don't you have a job? Don't you have a family to look after? You go in there to go help a flight? Like, what? How about how about if he gets uncovered that this family's scamming and this whole thing's a fucking ruse and the kid's somewhere in some person's Airbnb chilling and just not touching his fucking phone? Come on, man. What is all this shit? Mr. Slater has seen um, on Monday, the 17th of June, after he told a friend he planned to walk the northern west village of Masca, a holiday combination of Los, Cris Los Cristianos in the south, a journey that would have taken 11 hours on foot. Let's be real. He was last seen on Monday, the 17th of June. I'm talking to you now, and it's now currently Tuesday, the 2nd of July. If this kid isn't D-E-A-D, most likely he's somewhere hiding. But the chances of finding him alive are pretty slim. You know, it is what it is. Police on the island confirmed on Sunday that the search for Mr. Slater had been called off nearly two weeks after his disappearance. It came a day after the police urged volunteers to come forward to help the large-scale search in the Masca area. Recording a TikTok video from the site on Saturday, Mr. Arnott said, So guys, I've literally been waiting for absolutely ages now. This is a massive PR thing, I'm telling you. There's people everywhere, literally people everywhere. Nobody's doing anything. Why would they? why would they it must be hell it must be hell 
to be a Tenerife bar owner, to be a Tenerife breakfast spot owner, cafe owner, laundry owner, Airbnb owner, holiday resort owner, hotel owner, whatever. Because in one respect, the British people, the English folk that come to your tiny island to come and party during the summers, as some of the Europeans, they basically fund your entire life. They allow your kids to go to school. They fucking pay for your second car. They allow you to make an extension on your home. They basically are the reason why you guys are living a good life. But on the other side of it, you must hate when they come around because they leave your places a pigsty. They come to your bars. They drink too much. They fight. They vomit everywhere. And in some cases, they do too much drugs and they get lost in the mountains, take up all your police resources looking for them right and then they also give your island a bad name because it makes it look like people are not being regulated and kind of looked after the right way when it's not it's not the case it's just english people not being able to you know kind of judge things and do things with imbalance so you must hate the tourism tourism must be such a love-hate relationship with people in these type of places what do you do you can't live without these people because they literally legitimately legitimately fund your life support you keep your family's lights on and shit allow your kid to go to foreign school to go to a fucking university somewhere abroad but on the other side they legitimately can be seen vomiting out of the second floor window of your airbnb and leaving a string a trail of fucking vomit like a snail running down the side of your building that you still haven't been able to wash off since last year <sighs> he added i've been here for ages yeah there's people everywhere everyone's still in their cars i'm going to crack on with the search for jay in the area where i think he is i've, I've it's been so quiet about this i'm not doing any more people i'm sick of this crap and there's the guy there right he definitely looks like a guy that would legitimately leave his own home to go search for somebody he doesn't know in another country absolute dork um continuing on in a follow-up video he says it's so, i'm so blooming stressed and annoyed about what's just happened i thought today was going to be so productive i thought so many people were going to show up i thought it was going to be really organized i thought it was going to be really massive and it's not bro one thing i've learned in my short time on this earth never get involved in other people's shit offer your condolences from afar but never get involved you never know what's going on unless you're direct family why are you getting involved in this way why are you making it all about yourself why are you documenting this stuff on fucking tiktok in the first place that's the first mistake you made getting involved in other people's business and now you're surprised good luck a group of around 30 to 40 volunteers turned up to help rescue teams on Saturday, scouring the huge, area, the huge area of rugged and hilly terrain. It came after Mrs. Slater's mother, Debbie Duncan, his father, Warren, and brother, Zach, flew out to help police at Mountain Rescue, uh, Rescue Team search for the teenager shortly after he first disappeared. There he is there with his mum. Miss du Miss Duncan told the Telegraph that she ha that she has every faith in the police have been trying to find her son. She also said she couldn't thank Paul Arnold enough for his efforts. Police said that they are keeping the investigation to Mr. Uh, uh, Slater's disappearance open after they ended their search efforts on Sunday. However, they added they could yet they could yet open up searches in the south of the island, but have not provided any updates. A British man who travelled to the island after Slater disappeared said, I was a little bit more scared about coming here than I have been and me and my friend have made sure that we each have each other's location, which we wouldn't have done before all this happened. Bro, you don't need to share your location with your best friend. You know what you need to do? You need to take that pill, you need to break it into four little bits. You need to take the MDMA and crush it as fine as you can and dab it a little bit with your fucking finger. You need to do a line and maybe wait between lines, half an hour, an hour. That's what you need to do just moderate yourself if you're drinking booze in a very sunny climate and you're getting dehydrated guess what you do you drink some water in between every fucking pint in between every fucking cocktail it's not that difficult and maybe you know what if you're getting too fucked up you know what you do you know what you do if you get too fucked up instead of sharing your location with all your fucking contacts and making them responsible for your fucking well-being you know what you do when you're getting too fucked up you just stop i know it's impossible for us british people to surmise and to rationalize but if you're getting so fucked up that you need to share your location with your entire contact list and make them responsible for you getting home like you're fucking 10 stop drinking and stop doing drugs maybe it's just not for you which is perfectly okay too nothing has to be for everybody maybe doing drugs and drinking isn't for you if you have to have people legitimately check up on you and make sure you got home okay because as a grown-ass adult that doesn't make any sense it really doesn't but again what do I know?
A British woman on holiday on the island said it was disappointing that police had ended their search and added, he's a young boy. There's a family to know that he's out there somewhere. It's quite terrifying. Really, is it though? Is it though? If he didn't go off wandering by himself, trying to find Wi-Fi or trying to score another baggie, would he, be, would, he, would he still be alive now? Probably. Probably. If he didn't do that last bit of fucking care in the bathroom and end up in a fucking chaos and end up in some mountain somewhere and mistook a ridge and mistook a K for his double bed, right, in some Airbnb, would he still be alive right now? Probably. Another man from the UK who's holidaying in Tenerife said, I've been here for a week. I've seen no posters, hardly any police patrols going around. It's like nothing's happened, really. Why would Tenerife completely stop what they're doing as a f fucking and just decide to put all their resources in finding a teenager who most likely just did too much and didn't know how to self-relegate so have to self-regulate and shit why should it be their responsibility why 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 come on bro um, Mrs. Slater had been holidaying with friends in the southern Tenerife before travelling to the northern um, western village of Masca with two people he met on the NRG Music Festival on Sunday 16th of June. After the event ended he got into the car and travelled to a small Airbnb in Masca with two men who police said the Saturday were not relevant to the case. So the two men that dropped him off to see, this is the thing, see look what's happened here, look what's happened here. They tried to make it seem like the two men in the car were the suspects, but I guess the, the, the two men in the car have been ruled out the investigation. This kid leaves the MBB without his friends, by the way. Leaves the festival without his friends. He gets into the car with two people he doesn't know. Most likely they're dealers. Most likely they are just random people he bumped. Because sometimes when you go to a foreign country and you're a British person, you get drunk somewhere, you get fucked up, and some random people end up taking you to your location, to your fucking accommodation. It's happened to me in the past. I'm not talking for it from a point of fucking superiority. I'm British like everybody else. I've done some fuck shit sometimes you end up in a car with strangers and they drop you off at your hotel because they know most likely you're staying here cool it's happened before they dropped him off so these people are saying no we dropped him off at the, at the, at the, at the front of this hotel there's probably CCTV footage that can corroborate their story they see them dropping him off they see him wandering into the fucking hotel kind of and then from there he disappeared so they did their job they got strangers who aren't even his friends got him back home and somehow he still ends up getting lost in the mountains <laughs> absolutely insane mr slater from oswald oswald thistle near blackburn in lancashire told a friend over the phone in 8 30 a.m in the following morning that he was walking back to his holiday accommodation after missing a bus so maybe he was taken to a location to get a bus before getting to the airbnb the police corroborated that cctv footage i could see hey he got left at this bus stop to get a bus to go to the Airbnb. He was given direct instructions, get on this number bus and it'll take you back to your fucking Airbnb. He didn't take that bus. He maybe slept on the bus stop, whatever. They decided walking and then got lost. You know, it's kind of his fault, man. He also said he was lost in need of water and only had 1% charge of his... <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the most fatal mistakes you ever make, right? 1% charge and you call a friend. <laughs> you know that one percent charge is gone if i'd rather you know what i'd rather do i'd rather get my google maps up and find my airbnb on the map and then at least have an idea in my brain that i'm going in the right direction apart from finding a friend personally but most likely like most fucking useless people he didn't know where his airbnb was most likely one person in that group knew who knew the address of the airbnb was responsible for the key rat sort of shit. You know, I don't know. Some people are just weird when they go holiday with friends. Instead of taking responsibility and having some idea where the where the Airbnb is, where the hotel was, and I don't know, whatever, they put all the responsibility in the other person. They didn't even let them have the key. Have your own key. Know where the address is. So at least when if you want to go home by yourself, which I don't advise by the way, I think there should be a rule. If you go to a foreign country for a festival with your friends, you should all go together and leave together. I don't know about you. Again, I'm not the most scaredy cat guy in the world, but I think if you go to a foreign country with your fucking friends to a music festival, the least you can do is go there together and leave together. 
especially if your group is mixed sex like are you just gonna leave your girlfriend to be at the by herself or you'll let her leave alone or you, like it doesn't make any sense so that would eliminate a lot of the issues because at least in a group even if it's just two or three one person's at least going to be a bit more like you know sober to get you all go home at the same time but again that's also going back to the idea of like why do you need a why do you need to, why do you need like assistance as an adult to get home and hol after an holiday come on bro grown-ups need, needed a handheld to go home the last person to see mr slater was matt was a masker resident called olafelia medina hernandez who spoke to a teenager on monday the 17th of june miss hernandez said she told him a bus was due at 10 a.m as he seemingly hoped to get back to his accommodation however he set off walk ah he did that thing that everybody does he thought he could just walk it home not realizing that he's in a rural part of the country where there's not much transportation around and things look a lot further than they look like on a map. Sidewalking, got exhausted, ended up somewhere and then he's probably turned into a scarecrow by now. Ah, he was told, but again, he calls his friend at eight, eight in the morning. The bus is going to come at 10. When you're fucked up and it's the morning and you're dehydrated and you just want your bed, eight to 10 a.m. seems like 24 hours. It doesn't, it's not really, it's only two hours, maybe less, but he probably, it probably just seemed too much time to wait. So he couldn't wait and just started walking, thinking he would like, you know, see the bus coming along the street. I don't know what he thought. Bad mistake. However, he self walking and she said later that he, she drove past him while he was walking fast. <laughs> By the way, isn't this hilarious how we are as human beings? This woman sees this guy at bus stop clearly pinging off his brain, probably still high, pr yeah, probably still drunk, probably looking very disheveled, very young boy. He's clearly lost. He asks her what time the bus is going to come. She says in her broken English, broken Spanish, whatever she does, she communicates to him, hey, senor, chico, hombre, stay here. The bus is coming at 10 a.m. The kid walks off, thinking he's going to find it himself. She gets into a car and drives past him and doesn't offer to pick him up. <laughs> doesn't tell him to get in the car. <laughs> no one gives a fuck about anybody. <laughs> she sees him walking. And she doesn't say, hey, jump in. Hey, lad, jump in, man. You're clearly fucked up. Jump in. She just walk, drives past. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. A go for me appealed. A go for me appealed to get Jay Slater home. I was set up by his friend Lucy Law and has already raised more than 43000 as the police search came to an end. So, yeah. Who knows? If it's a scam, it's a scam. Well done. Hope they, you know, enjoy the 43 grand they've made. If the kid is legitimately D-E-A-D, -E um, obviously it's sad and the 43,000 will come nowhere close to repairing that damage. But this should be a cautionary tale for all British folk out there, my English people out there, my fellow Brits, my fellow lads. Please use moderation when you're traveling. Please have a level of balance when you're going out raving, especially in a foreign country, especially in a place that's a bit warm, especially in a place that you're not too familiar with. You have to have some sort of balance, some sort of like, you know what I mean? You can't be going so crazy that you legitimately get lost in the, in the, in a legitimately one of the most scariest places I've seen. When you see videos and images of how densely wooded and you know rural and mountaineery and traily tenerife looks especially outside of the main strip it's easy to get lost there so bloody hell man you know thoughts and feelings go out to that kid's family hopefully they find him nice and safe it's not looking likely because you know he disappeared in june on was it june the 6th or something crazy whatever it was 17 16th we're now on the 2nd of july it's unlikely that he's going to be found alive but if he does get found alive uh, hopefully it's a lesson to all people to fucking please have balance some semblance of fucking balance when it comes to the boozing and going out and getting fucking crazy because jesus this isn't the way to go but again what do i know absolutely nothing absolutely nothing <laughs>